Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The large part of the reading for today's online devotion is the reading many Christians heard the Sunday after Easter. From 1 Peter chapter 1. To God's chosen people who are temporary residents in the world and are scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, God the Father knew you long ago and chose you to live holy lives with the Spirit's help so that you are obedient to Jesus Christ and are sprinkled with his blood. May good will and peace fill your lives. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us a new birth because of his great mercy. We have been born into a new life that has a confidence which is alive because Jesus Christ has come back to life. We have been born into a new life which has an inheritance that can't be destroyed or corrupted and can't fade away. That inheritance is kept in heaven for you since you are guarded by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed at the end of time. You are extremely happy about these things, even though you have to suffer different kinds of trouble for a little while now. The purpose of these troubles is to test your faith, as fire tests how genuine gold is. Your faith is more precious than gold, and by passing the test, it gives praise, glory, and honor to God. This will happen when Jesus Christ appears again. Although you have never seen Christ, you love him. You don't see him now, but you believe in him. You are extremely happy with joy and praise that can hardly be expressed in words as you obtain the salvation that is the goal of your faith. There's a lot for us to learn from this reading from St. Peter. One of the first things to know is that Peter was writing to Christians who were paying a price for their faith and belief in the resurrected Lord. No matter where you lived in the first century, being a Christian came with great personal risk. Persecution and even death could be the price that a Christian man or woman would pay for being a follower of the teachings of Jesus. Today, if you randomly asked a hundred people on the street about their religious faith, almost seven of every ten Americans would identify as being a Christian. Of course, being a Christian means different things to different people. But in the first century, as the apostles carried on with the Lord's work of expanding the kingdom of heaven that came in and through the ministry of Jesus, becoming a Christian meant living a holy life, with the Spirit's help. The holy life of a Christian man or woman is different than the life of an unbeliever. Unbelievers simply live their lives however they choose to. They largely establish their own rules and standards. They live by their own code of conduct, and as long as that code of conduct does not bring harm to another human being, an animal, or their community, and they follow the other laws and rules imposed upon them by society, they'll likely be left alone to live their lives in peace. Living as a Christian person, however, is very different. The Christian man or woman seeks to live a life of obedience to God. As we heard, God the Father knew you long ago and chose you to live holy lives with the Spirit's help. God has given us a new birth because of his great mercy. We have been born into a new life that has a confidence which is alive because Jesus Christ has come back to life. In other words, since Jesus was raised from the dead on Easter Sunday, a new life has become possible for all human beings. This new life is given to human beings as a gift of mercy from the hand of a loving God. You and I do not earn the right to receive the gift of this new life. It is received by us as a divine gift. It is a gift that comes from above, a heavenly gift. Peter and many other Christians during the time he wrote his epistles saw a connection between the sacrament of holy baptism 
and this new life and the promises given by God to those he chose to be his children. With this new life that God has given you comes gifts. First, through Jesus, he has given you the gift of the forgiveness of your sins. He has given you the gift of his Holy Spirit. He has given you the gift of saving faith, a faith that trusts in the promises of his Holy Word, a faith that when put to the test through various sufferings and trials will be proven trustworthy and true, genuine like gold. With the Spirit's help, you and I are called to live each day in this earthly life as God's beloved sons and daughters. Yes, you and I are still afflicted with a sinful nature, and like the unbeliever, we will often sin and fall short of God's glory throughout the days we have left on this earth. But praise be to God, forgiveness for you will always be found in the atoning work of Christ and him crucified and risen. You see, when God gives a gift, he doesn't take it away. Certainly, we can choose to ignore the gifts he's given us, those gifts of forgiveness, the Holy Spirit, and saving faith, but why would we? Sometimes, when faced with various trials, sufferings, and different kinds of troubles, our faith can be shaken to its core. Maybe we even go so far as to question God as to why he has permitted such things to afflict us. Maybe when we're in those valleys of life, we even question God's, God's love for us. Fortunately, questioning God or our faith will never result in his taking back the gifts he has given us. As we heard, when the fire of trials and trouble come our way, the purpose is to strengthen our faith. In these times of trial, remember always that the life that you live as a son or daughter of God is lived by the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. You are never alone, even in the midst of the most difficult circumstances of life. God has given you his spirit, and with you and in you, his spirit will ever remain. And so let us always remember to whom we belong, that God is our loving Heavenly Father, who through the work of His Son Jesus reconciled us to Himself, and has given us the gift of His Holy Spirit, by which we live a new life as His beloved sons and daughters. May His grace and peace be multiplied to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we thank you for the gift of this new day, we also thank you for the gift of a new life that comes from above, a life we have received through the holy washing of your word, received by us in holy baptism. Strengthen us in this new life through the gifts you have bestowed upon us, the gift of saving faith, the forgiveness of our sins, and the blessed gift of your Holy Spirit who abides in us and leads us into holy living. May we, your sons and daughters, rejoice this day in these holy gifts. And as our day draws to a close, let us lie down and sleep in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.